Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. I hear the birds singing this morning. I see the sun shining. We got a little bit of rain overnight, so I'm very excited about that. We got a tenth of an inch. I know that doesn't sound like much, but when you haven't had any rain for six to eight weeks, a tenth of an inch makes you want to dance a little jig. Uh, not a very good dancer, I know. That's why I beekeep. Today what I want to talk about is the ever dreaded wax moth. These little pests can do a great deal of damage and in very little time. Um, just recently I discovered uh, a little mess of my own. I had some frames sitting on my front porch. I walked by them every single day. Never paid them any attention until just the other day when it was too late. So I want to share that video with you and then I want to talk a little bit about wax moth control. So check out this video. What I've got here is a bucket and a couple frames that I had in the freezer all a few months back because they had wax moths in them. They sit on the deck and my closed in deck on this bucket for probably the last six weeks. Um, I didn't really need the frames. Um, this circle here, this is where I set the bucket where I recently shared I was going to do some uh, testing on the sumac berries and uh, see how well they worked for mites. Well this is circle here represents the area where I set the bucket on the frame. Um, just now I happened to look, take a closer look at the frame and noticed all of this. Haven't really paid much attention every day when I walk by it. But this is what you call a serious infestation of wax moths. Look here. This is where the chickens come in very, very handy. Watch this. Watch them go. Come on, girls. Girls! I haven't broke the frames apart yet, but I imagine in between them is just as bad. Get your big butt off of it so I can open it up. Everybody can eat, girls. Everybody's can eat. Get in there and eat, girls. Eat them up. Eat them up. Larva slayers. Yeah, we got the little kid involved. Come on, baby. Get some. Call this little one here Cracker. Go get some, Cracker. Eat them all up. Then where they were sitting on top of this bucket and that plastic bag, this is what's left of the plastic bag down here. And it's completely full of larva. Look at all these cocoons waiting to emerge and to pest. So when you ask yourself, why don't I have chickens? Let me know because I would love to know. I realize if you're in town, there's restrictions, but if you're out in the country, there's no reason not to have these lovely, lovely birds. Look, right here's one. Somebody missed it. Get in there, lady. There you go. Good girl. Let me get the bag out of the way. You don't need to eat the plastic. So what'd you think? Quite the mess, huh? So now let's talk about controlling this issue. The first thing you want to do is not do as I did and uh, leave frames just sitting out. You want to try and protect each and every piece of comb you have because at this time of year the wax moth will destroy it and it'll only take a little bit of time to do so. So you want to make sure you have your entrances reduced. So now let's say you've got some comb that you want to store until spring. How would you do that? Well, it could be tricky. They make a uh, a few different products today that you can uh, put in your boxes with just stored comb and that will keep moths away. One of them I believe is called Paramoth. I've never used the product um, so I can't tell you much about it. What I have used is a product called BT. It's completely safe for bees and uh, what I've experimented with was just a powder and you mix it with some water, put it in a pump up sprayer, and you literally sprayed it on the combs before you put them in the storage. Um, now this BT, it's not harmful to bees, but it's very deadly to wax moths. Um, I'm gonna link a video at the end of this one um, showing how I use the BT 
and uh, you can check that out if it's something you would like to check into. Now, other methods I've seen beekeepers do, kind of organic methods, I guess you could say, as you go frame by frame, make sure there's no wax moths on them, on them. Drop them down in a box. Once you get the box full, you put a lid on it. Um, you completely seal the box. Make sure there's no place where wax moths can get in. If you've got holes in the box, put tape over them. Um, that seems to be fairly effective. I've done that myself. What we're kind of waiting on, at least in my region, is the cold temperatures and I don't want to rush them because I don't want bee season to be over but once the cold temperatures get here and I'm talking like 32 degrees and below that will kill wax moths so once we get to the cold weather you'll be fine there's just this little window between now and freezing that we've got to put up with these wax moths and they will be hell on your comb if you don't keep a close eye on it so check out this paramoth Watch my video on the BT. Um, maybe consider uh, doing like I said and just going through frame by frame, putting them in boxes, tape up any holes, and shove them in your garage until spring. Um, that's a fairly effective idea. Now, last year, um, I experimented with just taking some frames, sticking them in a trash bag, tied the bag shut, um, threw them in storage, and I don't know how, but a wax moth got in those trash bags. So I wouldn't recommend that. So I hope this video has been informative, and if so, you'll throw it a big thumbs up and help boost it in the YouTube search ranks. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and make sure you click on the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees.